One of the competing technologies that was out there in the early days of the web that people tried to use to provide interactive web experience was, was something called Java Applets. And you'll see that the title of this video is, What Was a Java Applet? Because, and, and I'm doing this on a whiteboard because I use Chrome and Chrome doesn't even support Java Applets anymore. So Java Applets, I would argue, are really kind of a, this one of these pieces of sort of web history at this point. There are still browsers that support them and I'm sure there's still some web pages you can find out there that use Java Applets for some reason. But in general, Java Applets Applets have really sort of just been eliminated by the rise of Flash and, and really the rise of JavaScript and other technologies that run in the browser. So what was a Java applet? So a Java applet was the you know browsers for a while, again, most major browsers until recently, provided a way for you to load and run some Java bytecode as part of loading a page. So you would have a tag on your page, um, I can't remember, maybe it was called applet or something. Um, and you would give it a class name, um, you know, sort, I don't, again, I have no idea, I've never used these. So it's like hello.class. And, you know, like other external resources, when the page was loaded, your browser would fetch this uh, .class file. That .class file contained Java bytecode, compiled Java code, that would then run on the page. And it could, you know, do things like manipulate the page, it could draw things, it could, you know, add text, it could interact with users, it could do a lot of the same things that JavaScript does today. And, you know, again, you might still find pages that try to do this. So, you know, and, and, and how do you notice this? Well, you typically notice this because you go to the page and then this uh, piece of the page sort of brings up this spinner and there's like a, uh, the, you know, the Java coffee icon or something inside of it. And it'll sit here kind of spinning for a couple minutes while it's like loading the Java runtime environment. And then frequently the Java runtime environment wants to update itself for some reason in this process. So blah, blah, blah. So this, this was how this worked. Um, now, again, so this is a little bit now at this point of a piece of what we would consider sort of web history. Java applets are not uh, used probably by very many pages you visit. Um, so, you know, we can ask the question now, which is why? And I think, you know, my take on this is that Java applets suffered from really kind of the same problem that Flash and other types of technologies did, which is that they required external support. They require that the browser, so in order to, to get this to work, when the browser sees one of these uh, applets, it not only has to download the class file, and that's whatever, that's fine. I would have to do that with JavaScript code as well, but it has to start up a Java runtime environment, which is this separate program provided by Sun or whoever was maintaining Java at the time, and that has to load. And so that's one of the reasons why when you go to pages that have Java applets on them, frequently they don't load quickly. You sit there sort of watching this thing for a couple of minutes while it's doing whatever. Um, and it also meant that I had to create these sort of complicated interfaces between the browser and this external program. So there's this Java uh, runtime uh, uh, that's running the Java bytecode, and I have to somehow build a way for it to communicate with the browser, and I have to maintain that over time, and there's issues with different uh, compatibility because now I have two pieces of software, a browser and the Java runtime environment, and are they gonna work well together, and blah, 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 blah. So this, you know, um, this just didn't work out. Um, my experience with Java applets too, and again, maybe this is just how they were designed, which was, was what they, they, they were sort of ugly. You know, they didn't blend in with the rest of the page for some reason. They weren't using the same styling and the same markup as, as the rest of the page. And that sort of gave them this weird um, look to them. It was like, you know, you were really aware of the fact that there was this Java applet that was consuming this little piece of the page rather than that page, um, that part of the page, which could today be, mani be being manipulated by JavaScript, having the same styling, the same feeling of, uh, as the rest of the page. So, you know, again, so this is an interesting look at sort of a, a piece of, well, maybe I think it's interesting, maybe you don't agree, but this is a look at a piece of historical uh, technology that for a while we tried to use to provide interactive web experiences. And, you know, I'm, I'm not certainly not going to argue, I mean, Java is alive and well, lots of people do lots of things with Java, but, you know, the, the downfall of Java applets sort of really pushed Java out of the browser and really prevented Java from being able to participate in providing client-side web experiences of the type today that are really largely driven by JavaScript.